Hello, welcome back. I hope that you've all thoroughly enjoyed your spring break. And he's still here, old Skelly. Now, you either love the skeleton by this stage in the semester or you're sick fed up of looking at that. However, we're in the last stage of old Skelly boy. And when you're doing painting, uh, like we are, it is vitally important that you develop the ability to take your painting for a walk. In other words, let it meander down with you, country lanes, looking at the various sights it sees. Now, what do I mean by that? It means allow yourself to explore. Allow yourself to make up things as you go along and put them into your painting. That's what's going to make it unique and that's what's going to make it something so wonderfully vital for you. That's the important thing about being an artist, not just doing what everyone else has done, copying from comics or anime or doing the same old stuff, but doing something that is discovered within you, the voyage of discovery, to boldly go where no human has gone before. So let's see what we can do with this skelly. Here he is, and I've put out a few colours because he's kind of a bit dull. You remember last time before the semester uh, spring, spring, spring break occurred, we had reached this point where I'd very quickly done a black and white skeleton. We're drawn at first and then uh, put this landscape in the background. So let's make the skeleton a little bit more interesting. Let's give him some clothes. Now, it is very important that you listen to me just now. When I do these examples, when I do these examples, I do not expect you to copy exactly what I'm doing verbatim. In other words, I don't expect you to put the same type of clothes on the skeleton or do the same things. I am just giving you examples, but I want you to make up things for yourself. I don't want you just, just to follow me like a robot without any sense of your own creativity. I want to give you uh, coaching, but not dictating. So I don't expect you to do exactly the same as this. I expect you to use this as a fulcrum, as a way of learning to develop your own language. Okay, so let's see what we can do with the skeleton. Let's give him a nice red hat. Yeah. set it off because it's a bit colourless, this uh, painting of the skeleton. He needs some colour. So I've just moved a little bit of red and some black in there to give it uh, shape. There he is. I think I'll give him a, a friend here. So I'm just using some darkish colours here. And I'm going to 
Give him a little flying friend. A crow. There he is. Tail coming out there, quickly done. Okay, let's see what else we can give Skelly. Now he needs more colours, so let's see, we can give him... Let's put something round his neck. I'm just making this up as I'm going along, and, and you do the same. Enjoy yourself with the process. I'm going to give him one of those things they used to wear, you know, the, uh, the collars. They used to have them hundreds of years ago. They called them ruffs. R-U-F-F-S. So I'm going to give him that round his neck so he's royal. King Skeleton. Some white paint. He's got the royal kind of thing that they used to wear around the necks, Queen Elizabeth and all those. You can see how it's coming, you know, you can make your skeleton interesting. It doesn't have to be a, a kind of dead thing. We're bringing him to life! So let's see, we'll give him a blue, I think blue is a nice colour. Oh, that brush is too stiff. I'm just using that brush there. For, you, you have this one in your collection if you did my class last semester or if you bought the stuff from Blick this semester. Some of these brushes, though, I've let them go a bit hard, which is silly of me. Silly old Ian. Right, let's see now. Let's give him a nice costume. Yeah, I'm going to need another brush. You know, those brushes with the hard bristles, they're really good. These ones, when you're painting. The soft ones kind of go all wobbly, but this thing, let's see. Yeah, that's better. So I'm going to give him a cape. Because he is a kind of king lord of, king lord of skeletons. And of course, this bit's see-through. You know, we can see th see through his uh, pelvis. As you as you know, it's got two holes. At the end of this, we'll see if this has improved it. Maybe I'm destroying it. One hopes not. I don't know about what it's like with you there, but it's still coldish here in the bro in the. Um, the Bronx, I was going to say, in Brooklyn. But it's getting better. So here we go. Give him a cape. Because I'm, I'm not going to cover his whole body with clothes because I want the skeleton bit just to be still there.
There we are. And I'm going to use some of that black again to kind of shape it in, you know, so it's not just flat color. You want to give your color some dimension. And the uh, darker color there can give it like it's got more shape in it. So if you understand what I mean, you know, you can see that's already shaping in the the uh, the uh, cape. Cape, I've forgotten the word. So we're just making it up as we go along, giving him a sing and a song. So there he's got a cape on, all right. I'm gonna give him some, let's see, we can give him some. Oh shit, there you are, look at that. No, you can't see it, I got paint on my shirt. doesn't matter. I'm going to give him some ginger hair coming out that. <laughs> what a skeleton, eh? That's making him more colourful. Let's see, what else can go on there? Making it up as you're going along. You see this? Put a, I don't know if that's visible, but I'm going to put a bird cage down there. There we are. It's got a handle at the top. There it sits. There's a birdie inside it. <laughs> you know, who knows what comes out of your head? You know, you just let it come. Give this guy an eye. I think the most important thing with painting is just to have some fun when you're at it as well. You know, I mean, who wants to see a painting that looks like it's been done by a computer? Tell you who wants to see it. Another computer. But a human wants to be able to think of things that are made up. Let me see now. I need some more black paint. Got it. So I'm doing this pretty quick, so, you know, a lot of things are splodgy. There we are. food on the cape.
think I'll give him a bird on his shoulder. See if I can do that. Big one. Mm. Yeah, and there's the feet. <laughs> Big legs on it. Are you willing to have fun? That's what you should always ask yourself. Give him a kind of orangish body. It's like he's looking for the hair. Acrylic paint is pretty good, you know, it dries so quickly that you can kind of work up things. I'm, I'm giving a little bit more texture to that cape. You know, the whole thing is because I've been teaching you about the skeleton. It's so when you come to use your imagination, which we will be for the next weeks uh, until the end of the semester, you have more ability to use your imagination, you know, to create things that look real rather than just messes. So after having learned so much about the skeleton, you'll feel a bit more confident about painting around the skeleton. That's the theory. We'll see what happens when you <laughs> send me your send me your examples. Yeah, he's got a big cape on. There's, there's his heart. We're giving him some life and love. Skelly's beating heart. Yeah. Mm. You just think it up, you know, you're just making it up as you're going along. I'm just, I don't really spend hours planning what's going to be done here. It's an artist is making things up as they explore. So what am I doing here? Who knows? Let's see. There we are. Sword. Old fashioned sword. Yeah, it's starting to come, you know, it's, he's certainly, <laughs> certainly got a lot more than when he was uh, started. What's that? 20 minutes. So in 20 minutes, <laughs> oh God, he's now King Skelton walking around with a lot of stuff, birds and uh, this, that and the other. eyes are a bit empty. I know some of you are doing skeletons on beaches. I've seen one with a beach. 
I've seen one with kind of hands coming out the ground. I think he's walking in a graveyard by the look of him. He's fixing up the skeleton again there because I'd kind of lost some of his face behind the hair. There he goes. After having painted in oils, it always takes a while to get used to this acrylic stuff because it is literally dry already. Whereas with oils, you would be waiting days for it to dry. So it's, you know, it's much more uh, psychologically different. So I'm fixing in some of the white. After I've painted that, I'm not just going to have so much stuff overlapping. So I'm going back with the white so the skeleton is reinforced after all these new... Uh, weird things that I've, I've uh, stuck in there. There's his kneecaps. The arm. And you've learnt every single part of the skeleton. You know, you've learnt all the arm bones. You've learnt all the hand bones. Foot bones. Remember the difficult rib cage. God. How on earth did you do it? When you think back on it now, when you started this class, you would have never imagined that you'd be able to do all these weird and wonderful things. Uh, it's the pelvis, remember it. Okay, well, it's a bit of nonsense. You know, I've had some fun. I've turned the skeleton into a quick king in 20 minutes. You've got all week. So you can really go to town. Let's see. There you are. The silly birds. Very quickly done. I can always fix them up later when they take time. His cape. The thing round the neck. The ruff. The heart, the sword, the other cage with the bird. <laughs>